a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. We all want to connect. We do it because we're human. It's in our DNA. The Music Center is where we go to find a deeper connection. Be a part of it. Musiccenter.org. I get emotional. <laughs> I start losing my teeth. I'm too young for that. Replacing your teeth with a dental implant's GPS smile is about more than just teeth. I'm very thankful because this really changes a GPS provides people with missing teeth, failing teeth, or unstable dentures full mouth dental implants. I want people to know this really changes your life. It does. Just take that step, take that chance. They work with you and the doctors are amazing. The approach that we take towards patients is one of guides. The patient is the center of our universe. That's why our name is Dental Implants GPS, because we guide patients along this journey to their better future, to their newfound confidence. Call GPS today at 800-984-9600 or visit findmysmile.com. Watch Samantha Cortese and Pedro Rivera on the KTLA 5 News at 4 p.m. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. A mid-air scare aboard a flight that took off from LAX over the weekend. Video shows the moment a man went on a threatening tirade and attempted to stab a flight attendant. We'll tell you what happened just before that. Good morning, I'm Annie Rose Ramos in Crestline. Desperately needed food being delivered here right now to people who say they have run out of food and have nothing left. Coming up, you're going to speak to hear from people waiting in these lines, waiting for that food, why they say this is coming not a moment too soon. That's next. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes. Critics of Governor Gavin Newsom calling him out for what he did while Southern California battled a historic winter storm. We'll explain. Okay, do you guys remember Mark Cole? He just did the weather with Mark. Well, he's right here. He's clearly addicted. He wants to do more. Come on in. He's going to do a little entertainment tease. So fan favorite Lost and Hawaii Five-0 character Jorge Garcia joins us live. To talk about his new play, let me in. Let's go. Hire him. Go. Hire him. All right. I'm Eric Spielman in Inglewood. Got the construction helmet on, the safety vest, the goggles. Why? Because we're inside the Intuit Dome, future home of the Los Angeles Clippers. It's hitting a major construction milestone today. We'll give you a special tour. Oh, we love Mark Cole. Good morning, everybody. And clear skies, cool temperatures all the way across the Southland. And then some rain moving in for the end of the week. But we'll have a couple of days of uh, beautiful clear skies. Look at the beach. Looking gorgeous out there. No winds to speak of either for this afternoon. 59 coastal downtown Los Angeles. Shooting for high of 64. Same thing for the San Fernando Valley. 57 in the high desert. Inland Empire 59. And Orange County Inland 62 degrees. Full details coming up. Just come back to you. Mark, thank you. A harrowing, harrowing ordeal on a flight out of Los Angeles when a man threatened to take over the plane, tried to stab a flight attendant, and then attempted to open a cabin door. The whole thing was caught on video. KTLA's Alina Bovian live now at LAX with more on this. Selena, good morning. Hi there. Well, this guy, he was caught on video saying some very disturbing things while on board this flight midair. Things like once we land, SWAT will have to shoot me down or once we land, it's going to be a bloodbath. Needless to say, this was a very frightening situation for people on board. Take a look. Go Homeland Security with Balthazar on the plane. Why are you scared? Why should you be scared when you have Balthazar on the plane? Well, tell them to bring SWAT to shoot me down because they're going to have to shoot me down today. 
This is cell phone video we obtained from a passenger on board the flight. This man is now in FBI custody. He is 33-year-old Francisco Severo Torres. The video starts off with him yelling nonsense on board this flight. This was on a United Airlines flight from LAX to Boston. We see in this video the guy gets up from his seat. He's moving through the aisles toward the front of the plane by the galley. About 45 minutes before landing in Boston, the crew received an alert that someone was trying to open the emergency exit door. Door. The door's locking handle had been moved down from the fully locked position to about a quarter of the way toward the unlocked position. According to reports, the man then tried to attack a flight attendant using a broken metal spoon, hitting the flight attendant on the neck three times. Passengers, with the help of crew members, bravely tackled Torres and restrained him. Once the plane landed in Boston, he was taken into custody by the FBI. The sound is a little muffled, but you can hear him saying things like, I'm going to take over this plane. Francisco Severa Torres has now been charged by the FBI with one count of interference and attempted interference with a flight crew and attendants using a dangerous weapon. And take a look at this. This is a statement from United Airlines following this ordeal saying we have zero tolerance for any type of violence on our flights and this customer will be banned from flying on United Airlines pending an investigation. We are cooperating with law enforcement. It's a matter of uh, responsibility of all the passengers because uh, it's dangerous for all of them. So I think I will do the same. I think it's something unconscious and when you are not in your full mind, you are acting weirdly, and I think it's a good thing that people like tackling down. Now, the FBI is still investigating, interviewing passengers and crew members to get a better idea of what prompted this and what motivated this guy. We're told that he has a hearing set for this Thursday. At LAX, I'm Lena Bovian, KTLA 5 News. Alina, thank you. The FBI also investigating the suspicious death of a woman on board a Carnival cruise ship. A woman was traveling with her husband from Charleston, South Carolina to Nassau in the Bahamas. At some point during the voyage, the woman was found unresponsive. The FBI says medical staff and crew members attempted life-saving measures, but the woman was pronounced dead. Bahamian authorities are conducting an autopsy. Officials say there was no threat to any other passengers before or after the woman was found dead. Carnival says it is fully cooperating with the investigation. New at 10, we're learning about an armed robbery near the UCLA campus. University police say the victim was a UCLA employee. He was walking on Westwood Boulevard near Lindbrook when a red Chevy Camaro pulled up next to him. Police say one of the two men inside of the car got out and threatened him with a handgun. They then stole his wallet, phone, and bag before driving away. They were headed south on Westwood. Officers say the victim was not hurt. LAPD looking for a driver who slammed into a fire hydrant in downtown LA. It happened around 1.30 this morning near Alameda and 16th Streets. The crash sheared the hydrant, sending water high into the air. One business suffered heavy water damage. Initially, firefighters had a difficult time shutting off that hydrant, so they had to call the DWP in for help. It's unclear how the driver lost control of his car. The scene is now clear. The street is open to traffic. Developing news this morning from the San Bernardino County Mountains, a food distribution center is expected to open at any moment for residents who've been trapped in their homes for nearly two weeks due to the heavy snow. Most of the major highways are cleared, but many of the smaller roads and streets remain blocked by snow several feet high. KTLA's Annie Rose Ramos live in Crestline with more. Annie Rose, good morning. Frank, good morning to you. Take a look over here. This is the delivery. This is what folks have been waiting for. All of these pallets are seven total, ready to eat meals.
coming in and about to be delivered for folks. There's about 50 folks waiting for them. Now, they haven't just brought ready-to-eat meals. They've also brought blankets and water. This is happening at six locations throughout these mountain communities, and folks say they are desperately in need of all of these things. Now, I am here with Lou and Mary. Hi, guys. Hi. You say you're not just here for yourselves, but who else are you here for? I'm here for my neighbors who are snowed in for the last 12 days and are out of food and can't get out their front door. So we're going to pick up whatever we can and somehow get it to them. Mary, you yes. were saying your neighbors haven't eaten in how many days? They told us about four or five days they haven't eaten. So And we can't get down to them because it, it's so snowed in. It's, it's unbelievable. So I feel so sorry for them. Thank you so much, guys. I know. And I have Teresa over here. Come here, Teresa. I know that you say you have been um, living off of peanut butter in your house. That is correct. Living on peanut butter for about a week. That's all I have to eat, which is good because a peanut butter is, is, is good for you. It's good for you. Yeah. It's filling, but still yes. dire situation here. Yes. How yes. desperate are you in need of this food? Uh, I, I need uh, definitely uh, like canned food, soup. I wish I had soup for a couple of for the days I, I was stuck in my house. Yeah. And uh, I wish I can get some milk, maybe dry milk, so it will last me a long time. You walked here. I walked here in order to get here. How many hours did it take? No, it took me like 20 minutes to get there. Oh, not bad. So not, not bad, bad, not bad. Not bad. Yes. How are the roads? Are they plowed more? They are plowed in some part of the of the street, but to be able to get you out of your house, you have uh, more than six feet uh, high snow so difficult. I'm so glad you're here. I'm yes. so glad you're going to get the food that you Thank need. Thank you. you so much, Thank Teresa. Lou and Mary, I want to go back to you because how much, how tough is it to get through those roads? You were saying some of your roads aren't plowed. What are the conditions of the roads? Uh, the roads are uh, up from us are in bed and my neighbor across the street with his little blower cleared our street all the way out so that oh, we could drive out. I'm so glad you guys are here. Thank you so much, Frank and Jessica. So they are going to be handing out those emeries that you just saw them bringing in. Seven puppies. In the next 45 minutes, going to be giving out fresh food and produce. And the dogs are here. Everybody is here. We're all waiting for the food and desperately in need of it. So that is the latest from Crestline. I'll send it back to you both in the studio. Well, we appreciate the dogs are having fun, yeah. but gosh, not to eat for four or five days straight. <laughs> that is pretty awful. Um, glad those folks are there to help yeah. out. Annie Rose, thank you for that. Uh, Governor Gavin Newsom is getting a slammed for a recent trip to Baja. It happened while California's mountain residents were struggling to dig out of this historic snowfall. Newsom's office says the governor was on a personal trip, but returned to California Sunday and met with emergency officials about the snow situation. Unclear why Newsom opted to travel out of the country <coughs> days after blizzard slammed parts of the state. Last Wednesday, he declared a state of emergency in 13 counties, including Los Angeles, which helped to bring in more resources to clear deep snow and provide supplies to hard hit mountain communities. All right, it is 1010, and I, I wish we had better news for the people in the mountains, but I, I guess later in the week it's it's going to get rough again. Yeah, going to get uh, some more snow anywhere above the 8,000 foot level. Uh, looking at getting, uh, you know, maybe another foot or two of snow. Mm -hmm. Right now, every inch is just yeah. too much. Yeah. So, uh, but for today, beautiful. It's clear out of the mountains, clear downtown.